So yeah, just quickly, I'm Eric Rempel. I'm the Chief Innovation Officer for Redwood Logistics. And Daniel, maybe tell us a little bit about yourself. And Yeah, sure. Uh, Daniel Pickett, I'll lead the uh, technology, uh, data, data science teams here at FreightWaves. Um, we've been doing it about six years, which, uh, you know, the six years it, that we've had in, in this market, uh, you know, feels like the best two decades of my career. Uh, so. <laughs> Oh. Especially lately. <laughs> I, won't, I won't read into that at all. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, you know, over the last few years, especially with uh, a lot of the investments we've seen, we've seen kind of a paradigm shift. Um, the TMS, you know, traditionally was the heartbeat, the life, and, you know, very much still is of, of how operations get done in our industry. Uh, but things are starting to change, right? There's been a lot of investments in our space, uh, even now with things cooling down perhaps in the market, right? There's a lot of, you know, bullish activity around around new technology. You know, maybe tell me what, what you've been seeing and, and kind of how the industry is evolving away from the TMS being everything to, you know, what what kind of evolution we're seeing with technology playing a, a role in our day-to-day -day lives. Yeah, I, I mean, I think you raise a great point. The, the TMS, um, d despite all the innovations happening, the TMS is still, it is the book of record. You know, it, it is the general ledger of what, what are we moving today. Um, and, but, but like you said, within the last five to ten years, and, and certainly Freightways is an example of this, there's been this diaspora of venture capital that rushed in to, to solve a lot of the problems that, you know, were maybe bigger than one TMS, um, you know, or, or just that, you know, the TMSs are focused on, hey, we've got to, you know, we, we've got to do what we do best, which is, you know, arranging, planning, keeping track of all the loads we're, we're booking or moving or whatever it is. Um, but yeah, so, so the, the flood of venture capital, the flood of, you know, kind of maybe people from outside the industry coming in has just created this amazing diaspora of, of new capabilities. And, you know, if you, if you walk down the hall, you, you see it. You see the, um, uh, some of my, I, I love our, our big sponsors, some of my favorite people to talk to are the small booths, the ones that are just have an idea. They, they had a problem and, you know, you, they got uh, freight experts together with technology experts and said, hang on, there might be a better way here. Um, so th that's really exciting. Um, obviously, uh, you know, some of those are going to stand the test of time. Uh, you know, some of those ideas are going to consolidate or get rolled up or whatever it is. And, and earlier, uh, you know, we were out here talking about Convoy, which um, th their legacy is, you know, th there's people that love Convoy and there's people that, that didn't. But uh, their legacy of, of kind of bringing a new level of technology investment and data and analytics and just can we, can we solve some of the problems in this industry, uh, you know, that, that legacy is very much real. Um, and, and you still see it out in the hall. Uh, you know, they, they, they took some of the legacy players and made them say, okay, we, we've actually got to invest in this stuff. And I think that's a, that's a good trend here. It's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to reduce carbon emissions. It's going to reduce costs. It's going to make people more resilient. So, um, you know, long term, these are going to be good trends. But but yeah, it can feel, uh, you know, you, you, you break a few eggs when you make an omelet. I think that's, I think that's fair. Um, you know, it's interesting, right? Your point on, uh, you know, the new digital freight brokerages and that technology evolution. And, you know, certainly, you know, one of their value propositions is a digital TMS that can automate, you know, capacity and rating and, right. you know, workflow automation so that humans don't play a role. But, you know, I think going back to, to your comment on, just this place and what we see in the hallways and all these technology vendors, right? Like they're not here or, you know, maybe a few are because that's their primary business goal, but the vast majority aren't here to replace the TMS. They're not here to challenge, you know, uh, a lot of the incumbents. They're here saying, uh, you know, hey, I have something that can get added on, something that can get bolted on, something that can make a difference in the day-to-day -day lives of shippers or brokers or, you know, other types of LSPs. Um, but often those technologies, even with beautiful interfaces, right, they stand alone, right? They stand off to the side of a TMS, and now you've got folks, you know, working in their TMS and also, you know, flipping to another screen, and certainly that works at a certain scale, but maybe tell me your thoughts on, you know, yes, TMS providers can't be everything to everyone, yet at the same time, how do some of these challengers think about bringing their technology into a world where change is scary? Yeah, for, for sure. Um, I mean, we, and we, again, at FreightWaves are a great example of this. I mean, six years ago, we started building Sonar, and we had the stars in our eyes, and our, our interface is going to be so great and so revolutionary. Everybody's going to come to our interface, and, and a lot of you did, and thank you. Um, the early adopters definitely want to check this out. You, you've got to demo an interface. You can't demo an API. You can't demo, we've got really great data. Let me show you this CSV. Um, 
and, and so, you know, but, but we, we came to it with that same attitude of like, we're going to bring something new and fresh and people are just going to beat a path to our door. Uh, but, but like you said, um, you know, there was this notion, hey, we're going to eliminate humans. I, I think we've kind of now learned it's not about eliminating humans. It, it is about making the humans more efficient. Spreadsheets did not get rid of accountants, not by any stretch of the imagination, but it let them do much more advanced things. And maybe it's cover more companies. Maybe it's, you know, look deeper into, um, into what's happening with a company's operations. And, and that's kind of how I see, um, that, that's how I see all, the, all these new tech uh, technology companies is we can make humans more efficient, um, but that person who's, you know, the TMS is still the book of record, making them leave the TMS to go, you know, open one more tab, or I'll just bolt one more monitor on the side of my, you know, futuristic desk here. Um, you know, pe people do get screen fatigue. Um, I, I, I feel it with my kids. Each, each of my kids has three different apps that the teachers want. None of them are the same to keep them, you know, keep our calendar organized and bounce them between all these screens. And I think the same thing happens a little bit with, uh, with all the different technology capabilities, and they're all super important. FreightWaves is bringing new analytics. There's some cool providers out here doing, um, you know, anti-fraud and, you know, limiting double brokering and kind of solving for identity. There's people solving for, um, you know, location tracking and visibility. Um, you know, for, for every little pain point in, in supply chain, um, there are great solutions out there now. But like you said, if we're interrupting the workflow, uh, you know, what's the user experience and are we actually making the human, you know, much more effective, meaning they can cover more loads or, or you know, handle more trucks or what it is. And so, um, you, you know, like you said, na now we're at the point where we've got to start integrating these things. We've got to get, you know, our great technology solution into the workflow. And, and we've been focused on that at FreightWaves. Um, I would strongly encourage a lot of the companies out here in the hall who have fantastic solutions to think about how do I, how do I put it into the customer's way instead of asking them to leave, uh, you know, th their natural path of, of, of work and come use my solution. I, th I think that's a great, a great point, right? So my background, my DNA is, is a Chicago freight brokerage, right? Yep. Um, you know, the first 10 years of my career at Redwood were around that. The second 10 years are certainly around integration, what we're chatting about today. But the part I'll challenge is, is the monitors, right? Like no one should have less than 14 monitors, <laughs> exactly. I think, exactly. you know, in, in terms of their screen <laughs> and what they're working on. Um, you know, so maybe take us a little bit further, right? We've talked about the technology. We've talked about, you know, the, the challenge associated with user adoption and having to have multiple screens open and especially at scale, right? Yeah. If you're, you know, a small to medium sized business, right? Maybe, you know, looking to the side and we'll pick on sonar, right? Is, is the greatest thing ever because you have insight on your 13th monitor, right? But at scale, when you have an army of planners and folks, right, there's, there's challenges there. And that's certainly the perspective of, of the shipper, right? But there's more benefits than just to the shipper, right? So, so maybe from your point of view, and, um, you know, uh, it, I'm going to ask kind of a, a complicated question, but let's look at three different personas. Let's look at the shipper and what benefits they have from integrating supplemental technologies into their TMS. But also let's look at 3PLs, right, or LSPs and say, you know, for them, you know, if they have workflow, often they've homegrown systems, you know, right. what does it mean to quickly integrate? And then lastly, to your point, for the folks in, in the, you know, hallway demoing their booths, you know, what benefits do they have? So shippers, LSPs, ISVs, I will remind you if you forget. <laughs> but yeah, what are, yeah, yeah. How do you see the, the, the unique benefits of those three? You know, so I think they're all, they're all looking for the same thing, but they're getting at it a little different way. And, and you know, we talked about we're not going to eliminate humans. Um, we're going to make them more efficient. And how are we going to do that? We, we are going to help them specialize in what they are, their competitive advantage. What are you really good at? I don't prepare the financials for freight waves. I'm really good at the technology and the data. Um, I don't go do the marketing. We have brilliant people that do that. Uh, you know, once every three years, they'll let me write a, a piece of content or an article because that's not my strength. Um, so, so that's the same thing we see here with, with integration is, is you get to focus on what you're really good at and you get to maximize the efficiency of your humans. So, so for the shippers, um, you know, you think about the solutions they used to have. They're trying to pr predict when you know, a load won't arrive and they've either got to, you know, ship from another facility, they've got to, you know, expedite something to keep their just-in-time supply chains working, um, you know, and, and so for them, instead of leaving their traditional workflow of, of where are all my goods and do I have all the right inventory levels at all the right stages, you, you integrate that and, and one person can keep an eye on more 
uh, pieces of the supply chain, more Sounds loads, like you're more about facilities. Orchestration. Right. It, it's 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 it makes it easier to do orchestration and, and really exception management because we don't want to eliminate the human. We want them to get involved when the ball leaves the fairway. That's it. Right. Um, so the same goes for your for your LSPs. Um, you know they they have a different set of problems. Hey, this truck broke down. Hey, he didn't show up. Hey, I've got to deal with you know whether it's detention or I've got to onboard a new carrier. Um, those things that used to take a really long time and be fraught with risk and uh, you know risk of error, risk of fraud. Th there's great solutions out there to do that. But if you're having to go log into another one, open another tab, let me move it over here to my you know 13th monitor. Um, you're, you're not going to be as efficient as as you know, as if you can integrate those things into the workflow so that you have a seamless experience. So again, it's enabling that human being to be more efficient, to be responsible for a greater, uh, you know, a greater volume of transactions or activity or whatever it is, and to focus on the stuff that they really have an advantage at. Yeah. Um, and then finally, for technology companies like, like FreightWaves, um, you know, your, your solution, your beautiful UI is really important, but the real genius of your business is the thing that you're better at than anybody else out there. And it's probably not UI design. It's definitely not, well, there, there's some new TMSs out there, but for most of it, it is not, you know, the, the business of a TMS. It's, you know, at FreightWaves, the secret sauce is, hey, we go find interesting data sets, we figure out what they mean for your operations and what decisions you should make based on, you know, early high frequency data. We're not the best in the world at, at uh, UI design. I th although you saw our new UI rebuild, and I'm pretty proud of it. So I think we're pretty good. Uh, but but you know our competitive advantage is really in 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 knowing the data and knowing how that impacts customers. Yeah. So we want to focus on that. I, I don't want to hire an expert when I integrate to Oracle, and an expert when I integrate to McLeod, and an expert when I integrate to, you know, Ty or uh, Tremble or you know, uh, there, there's dozens of TMSs out there. Um, I could I could build a team that is experts in integrating with TMSs, but that's not what our what, that's not our core competency. That's not our you know the hedgehog principle. I love Jim Collins. Um, we're going to hedgehog on being the smartest around data analytics and what that means for the freight markets. Yeah. And, and I would encourage everybody out there in the hall to, uh, to to do the same. Remember what you're really good at. Focus on building that. Um, you know, with integrations or, or with getting your stuff in, I, I would I would not do that in house. Yeah. What's uh was that the opening proverb in that book? The one thing he who chases two rabbits catches none. Exactly. <laughs> um, you know, I'll I, I hear a theme, right? And the theme is, uh, you know, I, I guess for shippers and three PLs is, you have workflow, and that workflow, if you have real time data between uh, your TMS, your WMS, your other systems, your trading partners, EDI, you know, follow the Pareto principle, right? You can automate, you know. 80% of it with 20% of the effort and, and leave the rest there. And then to your point on ISVs, I think it's also really interesting because, you know, I think if you were to, again, talk to, talk to all of the, you know, tech providers here, they're going to say we have a beautiful API that's easy to integrate with. And I'm not picking on, you know, you know every shipper here, but a lot of shippers can't spell API if you gave them an A and a P. And not for and not having the knowledge, but the time, you know, yeah. the, the backlog, you know, the, the capabilities certainly to manage that. And so what we're what we're kind of seeing is there's this paradigm shift to ISVs where if they can do something once and build a beautiful API, which many of them have done, then how do they have the world to take advantage of that? Right, without them having to create a new interface for customer A, a new interface for customer B. This one wants XML, this one wants JSON, right? There's all of these different principles. So I guess, you know, let's double click on, on Freight Waves and let's double click on Sonar. You know, maybe tell us a bit more about the challenges you were facing yeah. before you decided to, to partner with Redwood to, you know, handle, you know, large enterprise integrations and maybe why you made that decision. I, absolutely. Um, you know, again, it comes down to we're trying to maximize efficiency and, and the return on every dollar we spend. Uh, we're, we're just not in a market where, you know, venture capitalists toss up, you know, millions of dollars, um, you know, because you have a, a nice slide deck anymore. Uh, so, so for us, it was really about efficiency. Um, and, and I think as you start to work with larger enterprises, um, you know, when, when companies get to a certain scale, you have to have a certain amount of bureaucracy uh, just to manage the scale of the business. And as we started working with more shippers and, and larger and larger customers, um, we said, yeah, we've got this great solution and we've got this, like you said, this beautiful API and your developers will be able to integrate with it no problem. And then the conversation goes, 
oh, so I've got to start an IT project, and then I've got to get in the queue, and then I've got to argue for why my project's more important than all the other IT projects that are in our enterprise. And, and you know, it, it can be an obstacle to your sales. It can be an obstacle to getting your great solution that will save them money or help them bring in new customers. But, but you know, if they've got a 12 to 18 month roadmap to describe their project and get it funded and get a team put together, it, you know, that's going to be a stumbling block for your sales team. And so it, it is, that's why we said, you know, and, and um, I've got permission to talk about Land of Lakes and uh, Land O Lakes, sorry, and Unilever who, um, you know, work, work with Oracle TMS. And we said, you know what, we know nothing about Oracle TMS. So I can build data engineer, I can go get data engineers who are going to be experts in Oracle TMS. And we can get salespeople and support people who are experts in Oracle TMS to win this one customer. Or we can hit the easy button and work with somebody who, you know, who, who goes into this TMS and pulls data out and pushes it in, you know, dozens, hundreds of times a year. It's a no-brainer. You know, we've got to put our, we've got to invest our capital in the places where we get the most bang for the buck and, and you know, for, for this particular thing, integrating, I'm not going to be an expert in that. We're going to focus yeah. on being an expert on, on freight data and what decisions you should make with it. No, and I think that's great, right? And with, you know, Land Lakes and Unilever, those were really fun projects. And, you know, actually tomorrow in the demo, we'll, we'll show those integrations yeah. live. But, you know, I, I think the, the interesting point, and, you know, obviously joking about that API comment, but I think it's more PTSD, right? A lot of these shippers have had projects where right. things fail, and they're like, oh, those are scary, right? Yeah, and yeah. Then it's no fun to go tell your boss, hey, I just spent uh, $3 million, and um, we're not using it. Yeah. That's not a fun conversation. Exactly. So let's, let's fix that problem. So let's have some fun with the last few minutes of, uh, yeah. of this conversation. You know, in light of everything we've seen here, right, um, I think, you know, Michio Kaku, you know, obviously, you know, through everyone's mind into, into ideation mode and innovation mode, and, and I love that. Um, full disclaimer, uh, used ChatGPT to come up with the title of this, <laughs> of this conversation, but it's just, it's just such a unique tool, and we're seeing change come down the pipe so quickly, and you know, again, you know, I, I think we're just gonna see it accelerate um, at, at rates that, that we've never seen before, and I think in a very good way, but you know, Maybe tell me your thoughts, right? Like, are you seeing, um, you know, adoption of technologies now at a faster clip? What do you kind of think is maybe not as mature but will change soon? Just maybe kind of tell me your thoughts about what you're seeing out there. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, you mentioned ChatGPT, um, you know, a little less than a year ago. I, I mean, the LLM hype was off the charts. Um, it, you know, and the, the valuations around LLM were crazy. It was, if you can t attach LLM to your company somehow, your valuation triples. Uh, you know, it kind of reminded me of, of, of the great blockchain, uh, high, high blockchain. peak, and now we're figuring out what the long-term path is. I think that's, we're getting there with LLMs. People start to realize, okay, that there are hallucinations in here. It, it is great at producing human-sounding text, but it is not an, it is not an analytic thinking machine. It, it really is a language machine. Um, now, I, I, I think, um, not, not to steal away from what, uh, from what uh, Michio said, but um, yeah, the, the future's coming. AI is coming. Um, it, it's going to continue to grow, and we're going to see more of it because it can do great things around um, you know, interfacing with humans. I think there's a lot of behind the scenes that's still got to get developed there, but it will happen. Um, you know, other things we see out on the horizon, um, you know, you're going to hear about, you've heard it once, you'll probably hear it again about index link contracts. Uh, you know, that, is, that has the potential to take out a massive, uh, you know, cost line item and just headache every year, which is the annual RFP where we set rates and they're great for like three months until some, you know, some geopolitical event or capacity event, market conditions change. And then, you know, you go right back to tender rejections going high and you're going to the spot market or you're abandoning your contract carriers because somebody came in with a new lower bid. Um, you know, it has the potential to change that and, and, and solve a lot of the service failure problems that, that are a consequence of this volatile market. But again, to, to get to there, um, or, or to get LLMs integrated with your, your really neat solution, um, it's going to take a lot of integration work. And, and I would just go back to my, my point of focus on what you are better at than anybody else in, in the market, in the industry, in the world, and you know, let, let some of this integration work. Um, let somebody who's an expert in integrations and, and you know, does that, uses that Oracle API or, you know, whatever it is, uh, that, that FreightWave Sonar API, somebody who uses that dozens of times a year, let them do that. You focus on what you're good at. Uh, be conservative with your capital. It, it could be another year of, of, you know, this kind of 
is very soft market. So you, you've got to be smart with your spending. Yeah, I think that's great. And now's the time to really think about stuff like that, you know, even with the index contracts, right? It doesn't have to be all or nothing, right? I think with a good integration, you have the power of choice. I need spot, I need contract, right. index is coming, um, you know, and, and the art is, is certainly there and what's possible is certainly in front of us. So Daniel, thank you so much for your time. Thanks, Eric. It's been a lot of fun. Absolutely. And uh, thank you, everybody.